Hi, my name is Brian Carnes, and today I'd like to talk to you about how to move your ship in sail power. And uh, this is uh, one of these things that uh, you need to get going to play the game. And at first it might be a little confusing, but we hope to take the mystery out for you. So let's jump right in and get started. First thing you know about sail power is that you can't pre-measure movement. We're not jumping out of the ship and taking a yardstick and figuring out how far away that island is. Uh, so you have to actually uh, guesstimate where things are. Uh, now, you might say, well, how do I do that? Well, the first thing I would suggest to you is that your model uh, has a link from front to back. Uh, and that is actually recorded on your ship sheet as the turn delay. Uh, and we'll get into turning in a minute or so. But uh, uh, basically, if you just block number of ships, you can easily estimate that way. So if you just literally visualize, okay, that's four ships ahead. Uh, my ship's six inches long, so that's two feet. Um, and similarly, um, and the only difference between the scales, if you, if you are playing in six millimeter scale, um, it's the same deal, only you're uh, in uh, centimeters. So, uh, you know, your, your model is six centimeters long, and, and you, can, you can visualize it that way. Um, so, next thing we want to talk about uh, is that you absolutely must plot something unless you're anchored where your ship will drift. So, ships in the age of sail don't actually stop. They um, actually... Uh, would trim the sail to end up in a certain spot. We call that spilling sail. Um, or they'd drift. If, if you did nothing else to a ship and it wasn't anchored and it's not at a dock, uh, it would get blown by the wind uh, and it'll drift. So uh, you have to plot something. The other reason is it's considered cheating to move on the fly. So if you're sitting there and your opponent actually plotted a move and you have decided that you'll just wait and make a legal move after the fact... Uh, you're cheating because uh, you're using intelligence that wouldn't be known to the captain at the time he gave the order. So uh, if your opponent calls you on it and uh, you know looks at your ship sheet and there's nothing there, well, then you did nothing or you drifted. So that'll be bad for you. Don't do that. All right, so how do we find speed? Um, the way we do that is on your ship sheet, you have a speed plot. Um, and... Uh, if you are a sailor, this will seem a little backwards because it takes into account that you're a gamer looking down at your model, whereas a sailor is on the deck and the wind comes at him. But uh, I'll show you how it works. And uh, what you'll find is some people interpret this uh, a little differently, but the, it comes out the same way once you understand how it works. So uh, what I do is I take my pencil, or in this case a Sharpie. Arr, Sharpies. Um... And I look at how my ship is facing. So uh, let's say my ship is facing, you know, that way. All right. Uh, and then I look at which way the wind is blowing. And I take my ship sheet and put it the same way the ship was facing. Uh, backwards of this camera here. Let's say that the wind is blowing that way. All right, your pencil will be pointing at the speed that's available to the ship on that heading. So most basically, if you are with the wind at your back, you have not your best speed, but almost your best speed. And if you are dead into the wind, your speed is zero. All right, there, you might ask, why isn't the wind at your back your best speed? And the answer is, uh, that's called a wind shadow. Uh, and it's funny because in the first edition of Sail Power, uh, we thought that would be too complicated for new players, and we, so we left it out. Uh, and uh, um, sailing wonks we were could say that they, they liked the simplified movement system, but they really hated that there was no wind shadow. Uh, so since it is just numbers, we went and put that back in. What we're talking about with a wind shadow is this. If you're looking at your ship, uh, the best speed is coming off the back so that the wind can hit all of the sails. So that's going to be your absolute best speed. Uh, directly behind, as you can see, the first mast here is being blocked by the, the second mast. 
So that's not your best speed. All right, now if you've played other uh, uh, ship movement systems, uh, the, the most glorious is uh, probably uh, Wooden Ships and Iron Men. It was played in hexes. Uh, you'll remember that the, the way they did things is your your best hex uh, and then your, your running upwind hex. Basically, if you were fore and aft rigged, it was about half of your best speed. Uh, and if you were square rigged, it was about a quarter of your best speed. Uh, and uh, while we're not playing in hexes, uh, we're in a cardinal compass direction, that same basic principle applies here. So what you'll notice is that this ship uh, does 22 in its best heading. Uh, it's fore and aft rig, so it's 11 running upwind. Uh, now you'll also notice that there's a little 12 there. Um, the way you move into the wind is you obviously can't sail directly into the wind, so you have to zigzag back and forth. We call that tacking. All right. Now captains were really proud of how well they could tack a ship in the age of sail, uh, and it was actually something they practiced doing. So, like, if if we were uh, you know between ports, we w and we had to tack, we would work on making it better and better and better and better. So to represent that little. Uh, captain's pride in the ability to attack. There's a one speed bump for it. So instead of being 11, it's 12. It's not a lot. Uh, just a hair uh, for when you're attacking. So um, what else do we need to talk about? All right. So um, when you are moving, if you don't want to use your whole speed, you can spill sail. Just put SP for spill sail. Um, you're not actually stopping, you're just ending your movement at the prescribed point, is the best way to describe it. All right, next thing is changing headings. So if you are looking at this particular schooner, or sloop, sorry, um, and it's on the beam reach, so it's, it's going at 22, and then it turns to the 11. All right. It's now turning into the wind. Now uh, the term for that is you add the difference. So now in the, the difference in this case is minus 11. So whatever speed I had left at the point which I made the turn, I subtract 11 from it. And if I'm still positive, I can keep moving. So let's say I had sailed five of my 22, okay? So I've sailed five. I'm down to 17 speed left. Now I turn to that 11. I'm minus 11, so I have six speed left now. Now it works the other way too. So uh, if I was on the 11 and I'd sailed 10 and I only have one left, but I turn to the 22, it's plus 11, so I'd have 12 left. So as you turn into the wind, uh, you, you lose speed. As you, as you gain the wind, you know, uh, you get more speed. Uh, and it's always in real time to, based on what I have left. And if your minus 11 were to make me zero or negative, I'd have to stop right there. All right. Um, now, turns. Uh, turns are in 45 degree increments because we use our, our cardinal compass direction. So north, south, east, west, northeast, southeast. Uh, you can also just use left and right or starboard and port. Uh, whatever is happy to you and a GM can understand or your opponent can understand if they need to read your plot. All right, uh, so it's up to 45 degrees. This is not a hex system. This is not a, uh, you know, we're not counting squares. So you can do a partial. So like if I want to do a partial right, uh, I can put PR for partial right, or I can uh, say turn partially to starboard, or whatever I want to put. Um, uh, and that's up to that. And you can put, uh, your, your crew understands your native language. So uh, let's say I'm sailing out there and there's an island out there and I just want to come just to the right of it. Uh, but that's, I don't want to go fully to the right. I don't want to be way out at sea. I just want a little bit to the right of it. Um, your crew uh, understands your native language. So things that they would understand go on that ship sheet like that. So you can do partial right, avoid island. That works. Uh, similarly, if you're following another ship, um, uh, like you're in a fleet, you can plot as flag. So whatever the flagship does, that's what I'm doing. Um, so th those are ways uh, 
you know, and again, if there's a question on the language, uh, if it's questioned, you know, a whatever you do, common sense language wise. Let's say you plot as flag, but the ship that you're following is way faster than you, and your opponent says, "How did you sail that fast in that slow tub?" Yeah, um, if it's questioned and it's not a legal move, um, it didn't happen. Uh, also, similarly, uh, you, the the interpretation of the English, uh, if if it's incomprehensible or you know, when we run GM games. Uh, Whatever the GM interprets that as ends up being the law if it's questioned. So just make sure you're clear. Um, so turning. Um, we already talked about what happens to your speed when you turn. Well, how do you turn? All right. First of all, I want to stress that this is a simplified system for sake of being able to run lots of ships. Um, so... Uh, it's it's you know not it's not a sail simulator but it, it hopefully reflects the gist of some of your age of sail movement. So here's how it works. Uh, your ship. I'm going to use this uh, unpainted starter ship. Um, basically, gets one turn at the beginning of movement, 45 degrees either direction, and then. One at the end, so at the end of movement, it, it can turn either way. It also gets, for every time it, it, it moves its turn delay, so that's the length of the hull, it gets another turn. So uh, a very large ship, like a uh, ship of the line, very likely will only get its beginning and end turns. Uh, small ships probably get many, unless they're running in bad wind, and then they may not get as many. but. Um, so a couple of tips about that. Uh, first of all, uh, you can use uh, spill sail in combined with your turn delay to do a hard over. So you're sailing forward, you've met your turn delay, right? You earned a turn, okay? Now you want to turn again right away and go hard over so i spill sail so whatever speed i have left is gone i use my end of turn turn all right that puts me 90 degrees hard over so now i'm like this i can fire my guns boom 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 all my guns fire all right so next turn i want to move up uh, I, I would i hardly hit with anything because it's too far away all right so i'm like this so I'm going to use my, my starting turn, and then I'll sail my turn delay. Then I'll turn again, sail my turn delay, and I can do another hard over. So basically I moved up, and now I'm hard over again. So I can move up on the enemy that way. All right. The other thing you got to remember is uh, the wind won't always be advantageous for you to even use sails. Uh, you have sweeps on most of these small ships. Uh, you can row. Uh, you need double sail crew on deck to do that, uh, to move uh, eight inches. Uh, if you have just your sail crew on deck, it's half that. Uh, so uh, uh, you can plot that. That's also the only way to back up. So if people always ask, uh, can I turn around? Uh, and the answer is, uh, the best you can do is a hard over 90. Um, so you can't exactly turn around. But if, if I needed to back up, I could do that with sweeps. Uh, there are some more advanced rules that you can read about in the rule book as far as movement. But that's just the basic thing. Now, turns don't cost speed, uh, but again, remember you add the difference, so your speed may change after your turn. You, know, you get your turns based on you know beginning and end or having met the turn delay. Uh, you, don't, you don't pay for them out of speed, but changing headings will probably change your speed depending on the ship. Uh, hopefully that's illuminating to you. Uh, more can be found in the rule book, uh, or uh, ask an experienced player or a GM, and they can tell you more. Uh, or last but not least, you know, I shoot us a question here at uh, our uh, Team Sea Dog uh, offices here. Uh, have a great guy day, guys, and uh, happy sailing. <laughs>